All right, everybody, I, I kind of feel like one of my kids came back from college. So this is a Jeep that we built for Willie in 2008, I believe. And in 2008, it was a little bit ahead of its time. Um, I think Kevin did most of the work on this thing. So this is a YJ. Check out that graphic on the side, amazing. So basically, Willie brought it into us for a full build. And it's up on the rack right now because we just put so, some of our new YJ frame plates on and new shock towers. But we'll do a walk around real quick and show you the running gear in the underneath. So it's just your simple spring over uh, with inch and a half Rubicon Express six leaf spring over springs. Um, but there's some really cool stuff about this. So right out of the gate, you got a Dynatrack Pro Rock 60 rear with 35 spline axles, uh, 538s, ARB. And we put our torque arm on this thing. And then one of the really cool things about this build is it's got one of our signature series gas tanks in here. So that's built out a quarter inch, and it may not look very big, but this thing's approximately 28 gallons. And where we get the gas is if you look up here, this tank, dog legs, all the way up front under the seat, and it's about six inches deep right here. Now if you look, there's still space here for up travel to keep the differential from hitting it and the torque arm from hitting it, but still hold a lot of gas. Another cool thing about that tank is it has the factory O2 Tahoe fuel pump and sending unit in it unit in it. So we got the LS engine, it's got a 5.3 LS and a 4L60, and when we got the engine, we got the factory fuel pump from that vehicle, put it right in that tank. As you circle around underneath here, you can see the torque arm coming up to the belly pan, and it has our standard cross member, which is 2x2 two two tubing, bolted in, and then skinned with 3 16ths for a skid plate. You sneak up in there, you can see Willie's got a 3.8 Atlas up there behind his 4L60. Um, around here, this is kind of one of the coolest parts about this build. Uh, we did make this thing smog legal. And uh, if you look, there's the factory exhaust manifold snuck up in there. Here's the factory cap from the Tahoe wrapped around. And then it sneaks past by here. Here's the other cat. Right underneath here, the two go into one. And then it's got a small Magnaflow muffler with single three inch exhaust all the way out. So this exhaust is completely smog legal and uh, with the factory components. Now if you look in the front, we uh, went junkyard diving and we found a 77 high pinion 44 out of an F100 truck. We cut the short side down and made this thing approximately 63 inches on the wheel mount surface. Took the radius arm wedges off, put leaf spring perches on it, once again, 538s, ARB. One of the cool things about this build is take a look at this knuckle right here. So that right there says Dead and Bear. So Reed Racing used to be called Dead and Bear. So this, this is such an old build that it has the Dead and Bear high steer arms or knuckles on it. Our high steer arms with our Chevy uh, one ton high steer. And something that's actually kind of cool about this that I like is spring over still has the shackles in the front. So there's arguments back and forth on which one is better. I believe it climbs a lot better with the shackles in the front, but may not have as good highway manners. So Willie kept the shackles in the front. It's been working great for him. He has approximately 4,500 miles on it with no problems now. So we'll let this thing on the ground and uh, show you the outside of it here in a minute. But real quick look in here. I forgot to tell you anyway why it's here. So when we did this, we welded the shock hoops right to the frame and he hit a big bump and they ripped off the frame so it just came back and we put our yj frame plates on there and then re-welded the shock hoops back on so if you're building a yj these frame plates are a great start all right so we'll go out there and take it for a ride and uh, show you everything from up there so this is just a stock 5.3 from an o2 tahoe but just a simple little jeep right steel wheels 37s uh, we should probably see if what it's like, you know, pulling onto the highway. Well, hold on, let me check. Uh, oh no, that's more than we thought. That is nine. It's got nine thousand seven hundred and forty-one miles on it. That's not bad. He's driven it quite a bit. So. If we can get a spot here, we'll see how the old 5.3 runs. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Oh, a little rev limiter action. She hit third. Wow. 
went for it. No! Oh. oh, that's 80, just like that. I mean, never mind, Willie, that's 55. Nice. Dude, she runs good. I like it. And then just like that, drop into overdrive at 2200 RPM. Cruising at 70. Another one of those uh, one finger on the steering wheel Jeeps. You know what I mean? Always nice to get back in one from a while ago. So Willie asked us to do kind of a, a clean build on this thing. And so if you pan around in here, I mean like factory visors still. Uh, one of the cool things are these bikini tops that we always put in. So we wrap around and snap it on the inside, have our, our upholstery guy build it for us, uh, Roman's Upholstery in Auburn. And then like this has a Velcroed center section as well. So when you're driving down the road, you're not getting any flap or any sound from these bikini tops. Uh, even the roll cage is just super uh, classic and clean. One grab handle here, hold on to while you're driving. Got the dash bar and the oh shit handle for the passenger. Uh, and this thing ties all the way down through the floor into the frame rails. And uh, as you can see, the little loops behind me to put the four point harnesses, but still not get in the way of a passenger if there was a back seat. So a lot of real clean things about this and the ergonomics are killer. You, just resting your elbow on the center console, reaching right up to your automatic shifter. This is a low car shifter for the uh, 4L60. And then the Atlas sticks are just right here at your, at your fingers. Um, we went ahead and did a whole new dash. And as you can see, he, Willie kind of likes the uh, battleship gray look. So we angled all the gauges. And then uh, we even laser etched, labeled all the switches right here into the powder coat. So that came out really clean. You got your check engine light and your blinkers down there. Just stock tilt column. We got rid of the YJ, all the heater and controls and stuff, and just put a Mojave heater in here with the plenum right down there under the passenger seat. Gives you tons more room. Line next to the tub and, uh, you know, drink holder right here at your fingertips. Another cool thing I like about this Jeep, and we do a lot of them this way, is you're resting your elbow on the center console. You got your air compressor switch right here. You got your rear locker and your front locker right there, right at your fingertips all the time. So you don't have to reach forward. So if you have your four point harnesses on, you can't reach forward and hit the dash if the lockers are up on the dash. So some of the little details like this make this Jeep and a lot of the other ones we put together super clean. Um, and even with the leaf springs and spring over, it, it really does drive smooth, handles good on the highway, um, turns sharp, radial tires, so this is definitely uh, one that will stand the test of time for sure. Well, that was a fun test drive, but uh, I'm sure what you guys really want to see is what's under the hood of this thing. And uh, I haven't seen it for 12 years, so let's take a look and see what we got here. I do remember that we took this all the way through and got it reft in California, and it was a pain in the butt. So this, if I remember correctly, uh, is a 5.3 from an 02 Chevy Tahoe. And as you can see, it fits in here pretty clean. And it's all stock, nothing done to the motor. We kept the mechanical fan, like always with the clutch and even without a shroud, this thing's 180, 190 and what is it, 102 today, I think. So he's got just about everything on here. We got onboard air. There's a air tank right here. Um, back then when we had to smog this, we actually had to get a intake with the carb numbers on it. And this is the actual Tahoe K&N setup. We kind of made it sort of cold air. You can see it wraps around, seals on the hood sucks from back there um some of the cool things we did back then is look at this we even put the the winch control remote on the inner fender well so it's not in the way up front so this jeep um came to us bone stock and we did just about everything to it and uh even today i don't think there's anything i would change on willie's jeep um let's see let me look one more time at the interior 
and see what I like or don't like. Well, I forgot to tell you guys, it does have a stereo that kicks ass. We put six by nines up in the top there and then six and a half in the dash and it does rock. So yeah, there's really nothing I'd do different, Willie. Uh, beautiful Jeep and thanks for bringing it back to us and I'm glad to see uh, one of the kids come back to the nest. All right, well, Willie's gonna be here in a few minutes, so we better get it back down there. One thing we kinda forgot to talk about that uh, you could probably see in the video is uh, these badass wheels. So I believe Willie called down to Stockton Wheel and had these made special just for this Jeep because he's old school. Now, one thing that definitely does date the Jeep and maybe the only thing that dates it besides this graphic is uh, those are 15s and that's 37s on 15s. So I don't know, most people probably know that there's not very many tires out there at 37s on 15s, but there's no way Willie's getting rid of those wheels. So he'll be uh, running 15 inch rims and searching hard for 37s for the next 20 years. You know, maybe put another 10,000 on it. So see ya. <laughs>